All right, so in the previous video, we finished the basic setup, which is this. And now uh, let's build up the final look, which is uh, the actual mops setup. So we'll start with the text and then we'll do the ring on the outside. Okay, so what we need is uh, I need to convert this into like this hexagonal grid. Okay, that's what we want to do. So what I'm going to do is we'll just take, firstly, we'll just make a simple hexagon. So I'll take a circle and we'll put it in the ZX plane. I'll make it polygon and I'll bring this down to six sides and then just lower the radius to about 0.1 and we we'll just have to check. Okay, hold on. Yeah, so we'll have to go pretty small. So make the uniform scale also 0.2. Yeah, I think that should be small enough because we need a fair bit, fair bunch of these. Okay, so or let's try 0.3. Okay, and then uh, I also want to extrude this. So take a poly extrude and we'll just extrude this a bit. Uh, let's also do one thing. Let's just reverse this. Yeah, okay, so just take this and pull it up and do output back and then take a poly bevel. So that when we render it finally, uh, we will get, you know, some nice highlights on the edges. We'll keep it to edges and do like 0 0.02. Okay, that's too much. So 0 0.005, uh, maybe smaller still. Yeah, so 0 0.002, okay. And then lastly, I'll just give it some normals. So I'll just give it some normals by face area and bring this down to 30. So this is what we have. We have like the simple, you know, hexagon. Okay, now pick up a mops instancer. And let's plug this in. So we'll get a grid. But what we want instead is you come to distribution. You say distribution type is honeycomb. And there you go. So that will give you a grid. Now what you want to do is uh, we just want to make sure that it's big enough so that it covers everything and then it's also dense enough. So just increase the radius. So it's about that big, maybe slightly bigger. And then just increase the number of points to about, let's try a hundred by hundred. Okay, yeah, just sort of, you know, lower the radius. So it's like a combination of things. Okay, let's make this about 40 by 40 and then just sort of increase the radius till yeah, I think this is good enough. So just come back to the circle or we can put in like a transform in the middle over here, you know, at the end and just try to scale it down a little. Yeah, I think this should be good. Or we can try to scale down even more and see if we want to get some more here. Because the point is you want the text to be able to displace enough of them so that, you know, it looks decent. If you have too few, uh, you know, hexagons, you won't be able to, you won't be able to read the text. You know, that's the problem. Yeah, I think this is good. Okay, now the, uh, hold on a second. Let's just see how much space we have here. No, we need more. So just, you know, increase the, yeah, because what we want to do eventually uh, is that this should be a circle, like it shouldn't be a square. Okay, so we're going to first turn it into a circle and then have the text displace it. Okay, so this is good. You know, we have our hexagons. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to turn this into a circle. So take a, take a shape, a mop shape fall off and plug this in and change this into a sphere and make it smaller. Yeah, and like increase the inner radius so that it's not you know, that sharp. Okay. And then we will take a transform. Sorry, take a, I keep forgetting this. So take a type in transform and you'll get the mops transform modifier. Okay. So take the mops transform modifier and just get the uniform scale to zero. Now it will scale the middle, but we don't want to scale the middle. We want to scale the outside. So what you want to do is come into the shape fall off, go to remap, uh, turn on fit and just invert the output range. So there you go. So now we have a circle. Okay, so this is good. 
Now the next thing is we want to extrude the text. Okay, so we'll take uh, another thing we can do is if you want this to be slightly smaller still is we can sort of increase the output max so they're relatively small. Okay, now take uh, type in fall off and you'll get something called as an object fall off. So we want an object fall off. And in order to do that, we will need to extrude the text. Okay, so take uh, what you want to do is uh, install the uh, lab tools. Okay, so the side effects lab tools, which are originally called like the game dev tools, uh, because that gives you something very nice called as a thicken. Okay, so take a labs thicken, or you can do a poly extrude and just, you know, move it slightly down, but the thicken is better. Okay, so just put in a thicken, and then uh, all you have to do is turn on both directions. So you'll get, you know, something like this. So this is nice. Okay, and then, you know, plug it in into this, into the object fall off and plug in the geometry and you'll get this. So what you can do is you can turn on preview fall off and by default, it's really sort of light. So you also need to adjust the remap here. So turn on fit and just lower the input range. See, so till you start seeing everything. Yeah, there you go. So this is good. So once this is done, the rest again is like a little bit of a repeat. So take a mops transform modifier. Okay, and then we can just take a, we can take the Y scale and just stretch it up like that. Okay, and then we can also take a, a random. So we'll take a mops randomize. And again, within the same thing, I can take a, a let's do randomize scale. Okay, but we don't want to randomize the X and the Z. So we just want to randomize the the y axis uh, about that much. Yeah. So if you turn off the fall off, you know, the preview fall off, you should see something better. Yeah, there you go. See. And uh, let's do one thing. Let's not do this. Yeah. So if you play this, you'll get to see your, you know, the text. So again, this is dependent. Like if you want to get in more points in here, we can get more points in here. Like I can come back to my mops instancer and kind of lower the radius so we can start filling in more points. And then again, just increase the, increase the size till it becomes a circle again. So yeah, so if you want more points so that, you know, the text is a little more dense and more easily visible, you can do those things. We can also come back to the object fall off and try to adjust this guy. Yeah. And also like do a final, like, you know, make this slightly smaller. So make it about 0 0.25. No, about 2.8. Yeah, okay, so there you go. Yeah, we need to adjust it a little bit more. Yeah, there you go. So the nice thing is because it's pack primitives, the feedback is usually pretty good. And then what you can do is you can take the, uh, you can take a color node and you can just color this. Okay, so the coloring you can base it on, uh, if you press uh, the I over here, you'll get something called as mops fall off. Okay, so you can recolor it based on the mops fall off. Okay, so you can just take RAM from attribute and pick up mops fall off and there you go. Okay, so you can get like some nice coloring. Okay, so let's just make it like blue or something and we'll make this uh, dark blue. Okay, so there you go. So this is the basic text. Yeah, another thing we can do to just adjust the text is you can come into the remap, okay, and modify the curve a little. And if you want to then, you know, just modify things a little bit like that. So you can also do things like that, you know, where, so if I want to have like a nice little border to this, but again, like if you want to do stuff like this, make sure, you know, the grid is dense enough. Because if the grid isn't dense enough, you just won't have enough points for it to be able to do anything. But there you go, that looks a little more fancy. Okay, so this takes care of the text. Okay, now let's take care of the, the pulse on the outside. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I have the circle here. I'm going to get rid of the transform. Okay, let me just see how big the circle is. Yeah, okay. Okay, we don't really need the circle because we're just going to start off with a mops instancer. And what I'm going to do is we'll just take a, a box. Okay, so I'm going to take a box and I'm going to push it in the Z axis. Okay, so I'm going to take the, the Z size, do a copy parameter and paste relative reference. 
divided by 2 and then just make everything smaller and just you know slightly stretch it out or actually just keep it like that okay and then uh, take the same poly bevel from here yeah and we probably need to go smaller still because okay so don't scale it down from here because that scales from the center and then it'll just break you know the the channel referencing that we have done so if you want to make it smaller you know make it smaller sort of like with a second transform node yeah i think this is okay so what we want to do is take a mops instancer and we'll just create a, a radial array okay so just come down just come to the distribution and change this to radial and what we want to do is we want to adjust the radius of this so yeah take the mops instancer and take the yeah take the uniform scale and push it out or you can adjust the radius you know like you can just take this adjust the radius and then we want to take the number of points and make them about about 100 should do yeah or let's make it about 200 and make the make this smaller okay and do the same thing like apply a normal over here as well so let's do by face area and really small and maybe like lower the radius again okay so we have our we have our basic you know uh, radial array so now what we want is we want it to move or sort of like give a pulse okay so we want to scale in z axis uh, every time uh, a fall off kind of moves through it okay so the one thing you want to check is you want to make sure that your axis for scaling is correct okay so what you want to do is you want to come back to the box and if we adjust the z axis okay so what's happening is going inwards and what we want is we want it to go outwards okay so just take the channel uh, take the center and the size divided by 2 just say divide by minus 2 okay so now what will happen is it will go outwards okay so this is set up which is good now what you want to do is just take a shape fall off and the chops uh, animation that we had created which is the the wave okay we're going to take this i'm going to take the wave here do control c and change the shape fall off to spherical make the inner radius slightly bigger and come to the y axis and paste that animation so what you'll get is you'll get this thing sort of moving up and down now the rest of it is relatively simple i'm going to take a transform so take a mops transform modifier and in the z axis i'll just scale it so what will happen is that every time it moves through see you're getting this slight scale so let's make it about five and if we merge these together we should have our basic animation see so what should happen is see every time it pulses the lettering changes see but this is looking too basic so what we want to do is we want to make some small additions to this so i can come back here to the shape fall off and we can also take a a noise fall off okay so just take a noise fall off and we'll plug it into transform and what you want to do is you want to adjust the amplitude yeah so adjust the amplitude adjust the frequency so you have like a lot of this you can adjust the roughness as well and what you can also do is come into the remap do a little bit of fit and just sort of adjust it yeah like that i think this is good and then what we want is we want it to be time varying so just do a time varying and make it about uh, three so it will move relatively fast see so you'll get this yeah and then what you can do is we can combine these two together okay so just take a combine so we'll take a mops combine fall off plug in both of these and put that into transform and let's change this to multiply so what you should get is c so you'll get a pulse like that okay. but we can always just take this and make it a little bit more so take the transform and we'll make this about 
let's do 10 yeah see so that looks you know nice and fancy and we can also try to adjust this a little bit more so yeah and then do the same thing with the with the color so i can just do a control c control v and plug that in yeah and then let's just adjust this a little bit so let's do one thing let's take this to be like a pink or something and i can just push this in yeah see so that looks nice and that's pretty much it like so if i play it now uh, let's do one thing let's take this color i'll just push it in i'll take another one i'll just just for viewport purposes i'll bump it up okay so i'll make it about six uh, let's also try another thing let's take the text and make it slightly bigger yeah the okay just enough that you get yeah there you go so just for slightly smoother playback i'm going to reduce the you know the instancer so let's do one thing let's just increase that a little bit to about point let's do point two yeah and then we can just sort of lower this yeah and then increase the size of this so this will give us a slightly smoother playback there you go and that's pretty much it you know so this is how we can do a simple countdown clock if anyone is interested i can do a rendering video of this okay so i had done a basic setup using render man but uh, the technique is fairly simple so you can apply it to you know any render engine that you're working in which is essentially you just take the attributes and apply it to a shader that's pretty much it but if anyone is interested i'll just show you the setup the render setup that i had done for this and uh, yeah this is pretty much it so uh, as usual if you have any questions regarding this or you know anything else in general about houdini uh, you can ask me in the comments or you can you know uh, send me an email or twitter instagram you know whatever is whatever is convenient and once again i hope this was useful and that's pretty much it